Hi Floss too. It's Arlene here. It's Friday, May 3rd. A few weeks since my last video, um, but I'm coming here today to spend a little time with my friends, my tribe, um, my people. Uh, I always enjoy the time I spend with all of you um, and the time I spend with watching Floss 2 videos, um, thinking about this community. The majority of this video is going to be about stitch nanigans. Um, you may be um, overwhelmed or like been there, done that with the stitch nanigan videos. Um, it's taken me a few weeks until I can be in the right place to talk about it. Um, but I realized I needed to. I, I wasn't going to let it go. I have uh, some things to show you, not, not tons of stuff, but I need to talk it all out. Um, and so maybe I won't go through all the every little thing we got because you certainly have seen that in other videos, but it's just important to share. Um, I think that's the, the sharing part of this community is what makes it wonderful. Um, and then if you're just not that interested in stitching out against the event, there's some other things as well, including, I'm hoping this works out, cross your fingers, I, thought, I think it should. Um, when I was at Stitch Shenanigans, I brought my bobbin lace. I'll talk a little bit more about it. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in my last video that I was going to do it, and I think I showed you the lace pill that I'd set up. Um, and uh, Dory from um, Hobbies Up to Here had filmed a good, 15 or almost 15 minute um, video of me. I was doing my bobbin lace. I was talking at the same time. I was demo demonstrating. Um, she'd asked, could, could she record? And I said, yes. And, and that had happened at the New Jersey retreat when I brought bobbin lace. And a few, I know a few people recorded and they did two or three minutes. And I had seen that Vid that footage inserted in some videos, but I'd never had anyone record so long. And so for those who have been interested in the bobbin lace and wanted more than what I could like get the angles of myself here, um, I'm going to insert that footage at the end of this. So if you just want to, like, if you're not even interested in hearing about Stitch Hankins, or if you're like, I've heard all of that already, um, you could jump to the end of this if you want. Um, I, I So let me just, that's, that's what, again, cross your fingers that that is going to work for me to insert that. It seems to have uploaded. I film in iMovie. Um, it seems to have uploaded into iMovie okay, so I think I should be able to add it on. Um, so in trying to just organize some thoughts and what to talk about, um, I don't need to go like day by day and moment by moment. There's Everyone has their different experiences. And, and again, you can you can search on uh, YouTube, FlossTube, Stitch Nanigans, and quite a number of people have already shared and some of them oh my god I, there were videos that popped up that monday night at least one if not two people and i was like oh my god i it took me all day on monday to get home <laughs> um, and good for, and I, I get it i so get it when you're in the moment and you've had this amazing time and you just want to share um but as the rest of that week went on and there were more videos shared um some people w really wanted to share every little detail and I know that sometimes that is exactly what I as a viewer want to know every little single detail. Um, this is, I think some of my take is going to be a little just more of the thoughtful, reflective pieces of it. Um, so first of all, I should share that just as the timing worked out, I got home on Monday, it was evening here, and it's a three hour time difference, by the time I got home, walked in the door. Yeah, I think it might have been about eight o'clock at night. Um, but the very next day, I was uh, recording a fiber talk with Gary. Uh, I um, the Wednesday um, mid show co host with him uh, once a month, and so just the timing of it was that we were recording the very next day. So part of that show, we talked a little bit about stitch nanigans, and and again, it wasn't focused too much on the details of what you get in the goodie bag and and that kind of stuff. It was. Um, it, there were just some overall thoughts. So one thing, and I'll put a link below if you're interested in that particular fiber talk to hear me, you know, literally the day after to hear some things. Um, you're welcome to, to go hear that if you haven't already. Just the, the day after thoughts um, that just spurred, that came out of my mouth that day. But I was thinking, um, the idea of snapshot moments. What are the, the moments now, two weeks out, three, Three, three weeks out, three weeks, 
Um, and there are, are quite a number of them. And I'll and some of them you you know you can't reproduce because no one would get it. And some of them you just quote had to be there. And but there's plenty that I think stitchers could get. And so here's the perfect example. I know I'm pretty sure this happened in the evening. At least it felt like it was. Um, Jen Felicity Stitches <laughs> called out B5200. And I almost think, and someone out there could correct me if I'm wrong, I almost think she didn't even say, does anyone have B5200? I think she just called out B5200, B5200. And a number of people, I think we all in the room knew exactly. Here's someone who, and maybe it was because what made it so funny is that, you know, bright white for whatever weird DMC world reason is not called a regular number. It's a four digit number and it's got a B in front of it. But because that was what she needed, the bright white of, of DMC, it just sounded so funny. And some of us, you know, C23, 096, it sounded like a bingo game. Um, but everyone in the room knew exactly what she needed. Did any, you know, we all understood, hey, that stitcher over there needs bright white. You know, someone in this room has it. And sure enough, a bunch of people, you know, were scurrying through their stuff and two or three people within 30 seconds were able to hold it up and offer it to her. And it was just, we all stitchers got that, you know? And uh, I, there was at least one other moment where it was a very public thing. I mean, I'm sure it happened in small ways within a table, but someone had posted on a face on, on the Facebook group, which, you know, had its postings of people sharing and, and things, even within the, during the days, um, I need such and such DMC number and probably just someone who wasn't going to call it out in the middle of the room like Jen did and sure enough somebody responded to that and then it was just a matter of making sure those two people connected because you know that whole conversation of introverts versus extroverts and who's comfortable and who's sharing and Jen was someone who was just going to share in the moment I need B5200 the person who posted on the Facebook group you know First of all, it probably wasn't a I need it in the moment kind of thing. Um, but it was also the the sense of, okay, we need to make sure these two people connect. So the one who needs the thread and the one who's offering the thread could get it. That was a snapshot memory moment for me. Um, on Sunday, the, the last day, I left, my flight was 6.30 a.m. on Monday morning. I, I left the hotel sharing an Uber with two others at uh, like 3.15 a.m., okay? So we're not really calling Monday my last day. Sunday was the last day. And because I was lucky enough to be there literally the entire day, um, and there were some goodbyes to be said as people were departing their various travel plans. Um, but most of that day, I was sitting outside. The weather was beautiful. Um, there were these, uh, I don't have the right words, like um, overhang with like greenery on top of it. And there were tables and chairs that had been set out there, um, just a few. And they were, I suppose, intended so that as we had breakfasts on Saturday and Sunday, people could bring their food out there. But the tables and chairs were sitting there. And so a few of us had started to move our way outside, particularly on Sunday. Maybe it happened on Saturday too, but I... I wasn't a part of it. And um, so for quite a number of hours, I was just sitting out there. And for most of that time, I was with some of the really important stitching people in my life. And I tried to just be so appreciative of the fact of just where I was, the, the beauty, the physical nature beauty of where I was, the people I was with, um, just to take those moments and soak them in. That's what I was trying to do. So that was an important time to me. Um, I will also say visiting the attic. You know, I, um, I'll put it out there. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not a huge spender. <laughs> um, this is, this is not a floss tube channel where you see someone showing haul every week. Um, I don't accumulate stash, so to speak. Um, I, I hold pretty tight reins on the, on the purse strings. But um, I love visiting stores. Um, I love seeing the variety of stores and what they offer out there. Um, I ended up going to the attic twice. I went on Thursday um, with, uh, we took two carloads of the various groups of people I was with. Um, and 
that was my first my first go at it. It was there was a lot of people there because the the typical thurs typical the the usual um, Thursday stitchers were there. Um, so there was a whole side of the room that there were models and things that were just hard to get to because there was a lot of women stitching there, um, as well as just the excitement of the first day. And it, I know some people wanted to go multiple days because they needed to soak it in and then decide on their purchasing. And um, after I was done that first visit, for me, it was just like, I, I think if I can, I'd like to go back another time just because you always see things differently the second time. Um, I did purchase a couple things. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but then the second time I went, which was on Saturday, and it was it was just knowing that okay, better better like get a plan in my head early in the morning, and started tuning in to a few people and realized that I found people. So Olivia B and Elena B. Um, I want to be an honorary B sister. <laughs> um, just as as in conversations and stuff, realized that they also were hoping to go early in the morning. And then I had this wonderful, wonderful time early Saturday morning sitting with Kara, Kay, Kay's cross stitch, um, and her friend Lisa. And in that early morning convers early morning, it was like nine o'clock, wasn't like, you know, six AM um conversation came up the whole we they wanted to go to the attic again also so um thanks to Kara and her car the five of us um all went over together and so it was just a different perspective I was with different people um and it just kind of got me seeing different things because again I wasn't really buying for myself I I wasn't on a mission to find this pattern or this fabric or anything I just wanted to soak it in and part of that soaking in is is being very observant to what other people are excited about. And the people I was with on Thursday were excited about certain things, and the people I was with on Saturday were excited about other things. And to me, that was great. There were so many other things that I would refer to as snapshot moments, but those are just the first ones I'm going to share with you. Um, let me move into a little bit of stitching, and I'm going to start with this. Go. In my last video, I referred to some stitching that I was unable to share with you because there was some secret stitching going on, and this was one of those projects. Uh, a, um, a logo, we'll say, <laughs> that I uh, designed with McKenna's great input of what she wanted, uh, something simple, classy, um, for her retreat. And I was stitching this. Um, and so, I, I don't know how well you can say, you can see this. It's very sparkly. Um, and so I gave a copy of the pattern to all the attendees. Um, so this was my, my gift to them. This is just mounted on a uh, wooden hanging board thing that I got at the thrift store, although I had it um, on a, you know, a display thing, easel, display easel, just so that it was um, easy to display while there. When I first took it out Thursday morning, I arrived on Wednesday just to get there early. I'm so glad I did that. I don't, I don't do well with time change, three hours, especially time change. Um, so I was so glad with the Wednesday arrival just to, to wake up on Thursday morning and know that things hadn't even really started yet, that I had Thursday, I was there to help McKenna to be part of a crew to help her set up and then really be a part of it as things got going. But that Thursday morning of sitting outside with some folks and I took this out of the bag and it really sparkled in the sunshine. Um, so that is a metallic thread that I used there. Um, and then from this same logo design, you might have seen on, ooh, it's attached, on some uh, other um, videos, people have shared needle minders. Oops. And it was the same thing. I loved that there were some folks who were actually starting to stitch this while we were there. Um, Trisha, the left-handed stitcher, I think I'm saying that right, finished it while we were there. I That just thrills me so much. So I definitely wanted to share that with you. Um, we stayed, the, the um, event was at the Chandler San Marcos Resort in Chandler, Arizona. I just wanted to share this piece with you. Um, there's a lot of history to that place, and I always love a, love a, anything related to the history. Back in the fall, um, bigger picture, 
collecting postcards is a thing that's out there is a thing and it's a world that I know a little bit about and I happened to be somewhere where there was a postcard show and I just something I was thinking about in the day that this was happening and I happened to find some historical postcards of Chandler Arizona if you are someone who went to Stitch Nanigans so this isn't actually that old this picture this postcard if you look at the cars I would say maybe 70s um, but this strip right here well, this is the hotel. I mean, it, it's got some changes to it. Obviously, there's more built onto it. But that building right there is where the hotel is. And this, you know, how many of us walked along this strip and ate at the various restaurants? There's the Santan, Santan restaurant, Santan bar and grill, whatever it was called, walked along this strip. This green area is now um, that whole forget exactly what it was called and I think this green area has got covered um, that's the San Marcos Resort that's the pool area that's the like the lobby area up there is where there was a, a wedding on Friday night and there was a DJ playing and there was dancing going on there was a tent up there yeah and you know if you look at the swimsuits I would say this there's oh wait no this is the postcard that um, has writing on the back Dated 1957. I love this kind of stuff. This one, um, I was I couldn't quite put the perspective of the pool to where we were. I mean, I certainly recognize the building, the windows, but I couldn't get the pool perspective. And these two, which both say San Marcos um, Resort, you know, when I first arrived, I was like, what? I did? it doesn't connect at all. And that's where, if anyone else who was there um, noticed in the lobby, but in the back area, there was a whole, like, historical display. You could do a QR code and get even more access to the history. Where all the hotel rooms are now, maybe not where all of them are, but there used to be this whole, like, bungalow thing. And I think that's what these are postcards of. But... I just wanted to share those with you. Um, so this whole little downtown Chandler, why am I showing, I'm, I pulled this out for a reason, because I was, what was I going to next? Where we were staying. Well, anyway, we were at this lovely hotel, and um, it, it, you, um, you know, I think every retreat will have its own feeling and its own atmosphere and its own whatever. And there is no doubt that um, this hotel that McKenna found was so perfect in terms of the atmosphere and the environment and the weather. Um, the, the, the in and I mean, you, you can't have a place like that um, on the East Coast in New Jersey, certainly, because, you know, for more than half the year, it would be useless weather-wise. You can't go in and out of a ballroom space like that because it was right to the outdoors. Um, and we lucked out weather-wise. It was just beautiful and it was not hot. And um, McKenna chose well weather-wise in terms of doing this in April. Um, what I w worked on there. So I've talked to you all that I am mostly a one project at a time kind of person. I did bring two projects, but I really only worked on one of them. And it allows me to show you an update on this piece. There we go. Um, I have no memory of where it was when I showed it to you last time. This is a pattern of mine called What Lies Within Us. Works by ABC. Um, I know I completed all the writing when I all the words when I was there um, in a good amount of the border. What lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. And I love the way it's coming out, and I will um, definitely be finishing up this up to have as a model. Um, when it's all finished, I will then be able to replace the cover image with the actual stitched image. Um, and what just to get the sense of size and what I love, what I purposely did when I designed this is that when it's stitched on um, 36 count or or 18, you know. 18 stitches per inch. The um, finished size is just about seven by nine inches, which is to say it will fit very nicely in an eight by 10 frame, a nice one inch margin around all. So, um, and that was using, and this uses just three colors of DMC. They are new colors. They are uh, 17, 28, and 29. Um, do I want to? Yes. So I, um, should I tell this story? Let me tell this story. 
So <laughs> the other project I didn't, the other project that I brought with me that I didn't stitch on, the threads for it are in this pouch. And I also put in this pouch um, scissors and needles for both projects because the threads for this one literally just went right in there. Now here's where things got a little silly. I um the first night I was there that Wednesday night, I was stitching with some friends in um like a couch area. And I know I used the scissors and the needles and everything that night. By the next day, whenever the first plan I got out to sit down to stitch, you know, I guess once I got the first ne the needle out and started going at it, you know, I didn't really want to take this out because I wasn't even working on that other project. And the few times when you need to like snip a thread or start a new thread, you know, there was inevitably somebody with a pair of scissors right near me. And by some point, probably by Thursday night, I just got myself on this little kick of, could I go the whole weekend without pulling out my scissors? <laughs> and it became this think I can't like and not only not pulling out my scissors but like not ever going any further than arm's length or the person next to me and not even making them pull out scissors you know and and the truth is I did I went the whole time without pulling out my own scissors and really without reaching much further than either asking a person sitting next to me or literally being able to reach to their scissors um, had some interesting conversations. Some people knew I was doing it. Some people didn't. Had some interesting conversations with folks. Um, at one point, I think it was Michelle and I were talking about, well, it, it begs the question, how little could you bring to a retreat and still stitch the whole time? Because you could clearly get away without bringing scissors. You could probably easily get away without bringing a needle, um, especially if you're not picky about sizes and stuff. Um, if you're going to stitch something with DMC and not, you know, some pretty basic colors of DMC, you might even be able to get away without thread. And, you know, then we got really silly. You could show up with nothing and just pick something from the freebie table, probably find some fabric on the freebie table and, and the whole kit and caboodle and do it. We then realized you probably wouldn't enjoy yourself as much as if you brought a project. But we had a fun little conversation about all this. Okay. The end result of this story is I have egg on my face. I need to eat crow. I need to all the metaphors, all the, all the sayings, everything because here's what happened. So I come home and the scissors that usually live in this pouch are not my daily scissors, that my good ones that I would never bring on a plane, never, you know, have the concern of ever being taken away from me. Um, they're not like, the scissors themselves are not, they are what they are, but they had two fobs. I know that's silly. I'll explain. There are two fobs that were attached to them. That was the reason they came with me for that. And so, um, Last Saturday, I was going to work to be meeting with my stitching group, and that stitching group comes from the very wonderful um, the New Jersey retreat I had last year and the group that had evolved, my monthly group that has evolved from that. And I was just gathering stuff, and I was going to be taking this project. All I needed, I needed to just grab a pair of scissors. I was going to grab the scissors from here, and I go to open it up, and the scissors weren't in here. And I was really stuck by this because, again, I hadn't been using them in Arizona. And I didn't take them out. Like, I didn't think I even opened the pouch since I had come back from Arizona. It really bothered me. Really bothered me. And I, could, like, and I kept thinking, they have to show up. They have to show up somewhere. I'm living in a mess currently for all kinds of reasons. There's, there's design work going on right here. There's... um. New Jersey retreat stuff going on over. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. But at the same time, it was not a case of they have to show up eventually. They were never out of the pouch. But, so this was Saturdays. I mean, I think it was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday of this week. I said, all right, I'm going to feel so silly doing this. But I know I had them out in Arizona because I know I was using them on Wednesday night, that first night. We were stitching. I know I was not into my silly, can I get away without using scissors? So I called the hotel. Now this is like over two weeks since the retreat had ended. And um, long story short, yeah, they were registered in the lost and found. They Someone sent me a pic, the, this wonderfully, incredibly helpful person sent me a picture to confirm it. And um, they just came back in the mail to me today. So yeah. <laughs> And the truth is, 
if I had actually gone to the stupid pouch at any point during those days, I would have realized the scissors aren't in here. Where could they have been? And then again, the best I could think is I would I must have left them sitting in or tucked or fallen somehow with those couches on Wednesday night. I possibly would have gone, figured out a lost and found. I could have reclaimed them that weekend. But I was playing that stupid game. The end result is a happy one. I have my scissors back. The meaningfulness of them. So um, for those of you who were a part of New Jersey Retreat or ever saw any videos from the New Jersey Retreat, you may or may not remember um, scissor fobs that were given to us. Uh, um, Barbara, um, who doesn't make floss tubes, she's on Instagram. Um, she, at the time, she was just a name on my list. She's now part of my stitchy group. She's someone I know and is, is a huge, is a friend. She's a, okay. But at the time, she was a name on the list. She showed up at the New Jersey retreat and had a box and said, um, here, I made scissor fobs for everybody. 80 scissor fobs, people. Um, and this was my first scissor fob ever. I actually had a few of them. There were some leftovers. I was the one who ended up with them. Um, and, uh, and I know that I was not the only one. I'm there was at least one or two people I remember hearing in videos of them saying, this is my first scissor fobs. So this is a, a, a this is, this is another pair of scissors I have. Um, has a lot of special meaning to me. The, the, the dear, dear friend who gave me, not a stitcher who just gave me this pair of scissors. Um, this scissor fob from the ones that Barbara made, this is the scissor fob and the scissor that I think of as, um, my souvenir from the New Jersey, one of many from the New Jersey retreat. Then uh, five, six weeks after the New Jersey retreat, go, I went to StitchCon and last year, one of the, um, or the, 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 what did they call it? They had a name for it. It was something, it was done. The last son make, make and take was to assemble for yourself this scissor fob. And this was the pair of scissors I had brought with me to StitchCon and I had put another one of Barbara's, um, cause I had the extras, another one of Barbara's fobs. And so once I had assembled it, I had just put this on there that day just to keep it safe. And I admit, ever since then, I had just left two fobs on there. So I am very glad to have this back. I'm very glad. I will now be much more careful. And yes, I deserve, I deserve to be made fun of for my stupid game because I almost lost my scissors because I wasn't even aware that I didn't have my scissors. Um, but it meant that when I went, to Arizona for my now third retreat, I was consciously thinking about, I need a scissor fob as a souvenir from this. And when I say souvenir, I, and I, I um, go back to a dear friend of mine, uh, not Stitcher, not talking in a stitching world here. A long time ago, we were together somewhere. I was debating the purchase. It was actually a book at a museum. Um, and she made a very, very wise comment. The word souvenir, like the French origin of the word souvenir is, the souvenir means memory. And to keep in mind that when you buy something and you're calling it a souvenir, you know, you, you could be thinking from the perspective of something that you want to remember, you want to have as a memory. And I always try to keep that in mind when it comes to something. So when I was at the attic, um, they had a whole bunch of scissors. I've, I've seen these kind of before. Actually, I think this one that was given to me a number of years ago, it's, it's probably the same company, the same kind. So I just picked out one that would be the scissors, the scissors that I would then in some way figure out the fob that would be my Stitch Nanigans fob. And then um, one of the things that McKenna gave to all everybody, and I was with her when the idea was born. <laughs> when we were together in San Francisco in February um, at the San Francisco School of Needlework and Design, among other many things that were there, there were these little crystals that came from a chandelier at the um, San Francisco Opera House. McKenna bought, she says she bought them all. I actually bought a little package of them too. Um, but these are ones that uh, she was giving them away as one of the many gifts she gave away. Um, I had taken one 
as I was supposed to, but once, you know, there were, everyone had them and there were clearly extras. I did go over and take a few others. McKenna knows about this. Nobody feel like you have to tell on me. Um, thinking, all right, somehow I'm going to create a scissor fob from this. Uh, I did purchase a little cactus. This just came from Michael's because in all honesty, I wasn't thinking about it when I was out there. Um, how did this scissor fob game become assembled? It's thanks to dear Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. I know you're watching this at some point. Um, last week when I was together with my stitching group, I brought the crystals and the cactus. I said, can you help me figure this out? She had a chain. She had it. And so I will, now that this video is done or will be done, I will have um, my uh, scissor fob and scissors um, souvenir from Stitch Nanigan. Um, so the scissors were one thing I purchased at the attic. Um, you may have seen from others as a thank you gift. We were given a corner gauge. Um, and then the other, oh, I did buy one package of Tudor silk. It is a type of thread that I've been interested in. It is very fine. Um, my LMS Needleworkers Delight has a few of these. Is you know they'll always say happy to order some. Um, but I've, they, what they have, they've clearly ordered for other people, um, is never a color that I've even wanted to play with. This is a color, I, the attic had all kinds of threads, and I thought, you know, this is my opportunity to just pick a color that I can envision playing with. We'll see what I do with it. It may come into play with what I'm about to show you. This is a Noteworthy Needle. And I looked at this, and um, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It, you know, a little box and a picture of a thimble. And I know the reason why I even really stopped to, was what was written here. Bamboo snap together box enclosed with chart. Huh. So I got to admit, that's what made me open it up to see what they were talking about here. And for my um, fellow love to stitch small people, you need to see what we're talking about here. I, how can I hold? I, I, I don't want to break it apart completely. Um, can I hold it up carefully? Can you see how small we're talking? Like this piece is the lid of the box. Now you need something to hold. Well, I'm about to show you something. Hold hold that thought. Okay, this, this piece is the lid of the box. Now, this is the, the, the pattern that's on here. There's a I think there's four of them that are out. Um, the four that are out are, I think, all four, like there's two March and two April. I think, don't quote me on that, which makes me think she's going to come out with other months. I picked the design that was the nicest to me of those four. In all honesty, I might design my own thing to go with this. This is on 32 count fabric. So you could see there actually isn't that much stitching. There isn't room for that much stitching. Um, there's a side of me that might use this little box and, you know, go crazy and use like my 55 count fabric that I have. And you could get a lot more stitches on. I don't know. I am just so intrigued by the little box. Um, and now the picture makes sense. That's a, that's a normal size thimble. You know, here's this, the picture is bigger the picture is bigger than the size of the actual thing. So, and this was found at my second trip there. You know, this is the kind of thing where you need to go multiple times and you find different things. Um, this, this is, does this have a date? I want to say 2019. So this is a new 2019 noteworthy needle. Um, so this is a, fairly new. And again, I'm, I'm intrigued by the box. Um, the, the little stitching design is, is lovely. Um, I love it's, it's actually not cross stitch so much as other stitches. Um, I'm just intrigued by the idea. I like the creative ideas out there. Um, that's the extent of what I bought at the attic. I did purchase this again, the word souvenir. Um, I have a little um, decorative thimble collection. It's not huge. I don't go out of my way crazy trying to collect thimbles from everywhere. And okay, it's mostly when I'm somewhere special. Then I try to find a thimble. And I and you know sometimes you could get them in those like touristy stores at the airport. I didn't know the chances of finding anything. But when we I was with some friends. We went into one of the stores in that strip right in Chandler, and they sold all Arizona items. And there were some wonderful things in there. And I, 
I wanted to buy something. I just didn't find anything that I really wanted. And some friends were at the checkout and they saw the thimbles and they knew it was something I would like. And so now, because I actually happen to have an Arizona thimble, so this is, you know, and this is not, you could now, oh, there we go, get a size. You know, this, actually, this this thimble might, no, I think it would fit in the box. It might be a little too wide, but maybe it would fit. It's a bit of a short, stubby thimble. And again, it's a decorative thimble. It's not, and this one's pewter. And there was a nice little bit about the artist. Um, and I loved the, the image at the top there. So um, my little thimble collection downstairs, now that I've shown this, I can add this to my, and it's also a, um, memories. All the thimbles are about the memories of the places that I've been. Um, what else to show? So from this bag, which you saw before, you can still get, and if you didn't see my video from the last time, this is a design that I've created, how time is spent at a stitching retreat. A little bit of stitching, a lot of buying and enabling, and a whole lot of shenanigans. Um, I'm just, what's in here is mostly stuff from the freebie table with a few other things as well. Um, dear sweet Michelle Mitch Stitch from Australia um, had brought to some of us these bags from Singapore. And now that I have shared with you, I can now, I was especially wanting to use this as an orc container. Um, and I was trying to stop my, and now that I said, uh, there's needle my, all right. I may not be showing everything because clearly I break the rules. I am using a needle minder. All right, so I'm not, I'm all discombobulated. I haven't shown you and won't be showing you my current stitching project and the needle minder that's downstairs on that current project is one that I got during the stitching retreat. Um, so I try to remember, I tried to remember to not use the things or keep all the things here, but I didn't do a perfect job at it. Um, but she also, Mitch Stitch, Michelle, um, what it means to me when the stitchers in the in my world think of the things that would be something I would like. Because, you know, there's so many in the floss tube world who, um, how do I put this? If you have been watching me, you know I don't, I stitch a lot of my own designs and I have not been quite into the whole of, of all the popular cross stitch designers out there and everything. And I love, love, love how much they're sharing and caring and you have this pattern and let's switch with, let's trade for that pattern and, um, and how much there was gifting of patterns and all that stuff. Um, and I often don't have a place in that world because it isn't patterns that I care to be a part of or care to be stitching and that's fine. But she found this. It was an old, it's canvas work, DMC canvas work. And she brought this to me. And I just love studying things like this. I mean, it's just fascinating to me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what are the kinds of things that appeal to me from the freebie table? Okay. If I am ever at a retreat with you and you've got one of these kind of old DMC books, this is this one is a hardanger one. Um, I will take it off your hands, not very, very easily. I have one other old Hardanger one, but I've already looked. It's a different, see how it's, their series? I have a different one. So I'm so glad to add this one to my collection. Um, in one of my videos, I once talked about how you can sometimes date these, even when there's no date to them. Um, but I am not finding the little number thing that is sometimes there. So... Maybe I can't in this one. No. So thank you to whoever put this on the freebie table. Um, I I think it was McKenna that had these. A CC work. If you have ever seen that, it's um. I like the different techniques, people. I've never actually done this. It it's like reverse. I haven't even looked at it carefully. Um. But I'm pretty sure you would say it's almost like you do the, it's like you stitch where you wouldn't stitch. 
I think this might just be cross stitching here. I'm not sure. I need to take, I clearly haven't even taken out the instructions yet. Um, but I like doing things that are different. Same with laces. They call this laces. It's also the same as fillet lace. I have shown in my videos some fillet lace. Um, they, now I am curious, I haven't read it yet, what they have you doing in terms of, um, yeah, look, I'm, do, I'm reading the back right now. They have you cutting all those threads. Wow. The fillet lace that I have done is buying, involves buying specialty net. And the real traditional fillet lace is that you create the net using thread yourself. If nothing else, reading the instructions is going to be fascinating. I don't know if I'll get to doing the actual stitching. We'll see. Um, this is the kind of thing where you, you barely stop when you're flipping through the freebie table because you're like, eh, what is that? But then when it's enough to make me pull it out and see, it's actually all different kinds of stitches. I mean, that's a case where I just want to say, oh my God, I bet the model is gorgeous, but it did not photograph well. Um talk about this in a second is there anything else besides this to talk about um, again I've I've got the pockets uh, pocket size Pepe McKenna did you call him that or am I just like making that up myself pocket size Pepe the bag that everyone got the lavender sachets that McKenna gave everybody oh on the table was Mo's sale thread I clearly did not get there early enough because I've seen in people's videos some of you got some beautiful colors of this. Um, I found this thread. I think this is a silk. Yes. And I just loved this. Um, I've seen in some videos some very good things that were on the freebie table that I clearly did not get there early enough. Um, and, and when I say good things on the freebie table, we all have our visions of what's good. Like, I'm sure there are plenty of people that in no way would call this a good thing. <laughs> this is gold to me. Okay. Um, this, I, I love looking at the magazines and there's also an equally good chance that I pick up the magazine and I enjoy a good flip through and then I put it back. Okay. This one, uh, not in English, I picked it up and you know, it was, it's no longer now, but it was this pattern, whole packet was stapled. Okay. So just by nature of doing that, it kind of flips right to the middle. And I admit can you see this? I was intrigued. What is that a pattern of? So this was enough for me to at least bring it back to my chair and start flipping through it. And I should have stickied the page because there were two things I wanted to talk about in this magazine. Again, I'm just trying to give you all the sense that we all have different things that appeal to us. And I mean, some people, well, it took me a minute to find it, but this is the design. Do I think I will ever stitch that? No. Am I intrigued by it? Yeah. I don't know why. I just am. It's completely full coverage. There's just something about it that's fascinating. I don't know. And then there was one other thing I just wanted to share with you in this here that is enough at some point. I mean, I might try that. You know that um, translate app that you can just like hold your phone over it and it like translates it. I don't, this may or may not help me in this particular case. So here's a design of a rug that has been turned into cross stitch. I think it's all cross, yeah, it's either cross stitch or like tent stitch, okay? But what I loved, and this is exactly what I advocate all the time. So here's like the big pattern, do the whole rug. Uh, I don't want to do the whole thing. Well, make a small little potpourri bag out of it. Or take a few of the squares, leave some space in between them, and make a little bit of a bigger design. But really all you're doing is stitching five squares. I love this, that they've shown three different ways to use in effect, what, what is in effect the same squares in there. And what I'd love to do is read, I think it's German, read what is written here to see, you know, how do they describe the, the, the ways this is done. Um, 
is there anything else that I was going to say about all this stuff? Um, that's more or less what I pulled from the freebie table. Um, I have this last thing to talk about and that to talk about. Okay. So, um, I, let me talk about this. So I need to get to the lace, which I'm going to save to the end, but let me say this. Um, it is May 3rd right now. Hopefully I will get this video up tonight. Um, and I know you are being flooded with Stitch Mania videos, like the first week's vlog or, or people who are putting up Day, daily postings or whatever. And so who knows how many people are going to get to watching this. I get that. Um, if you've learned or understand or have been watching me and know anything about me as a stitcher, <laughs> the traditional way of thinking of stitch mania, not me. I don't have projects on the go all the time and it's not appealing to me at all to have multiple projects going. Um, but that, but, but, I was thinking about this a lot and I actually was on the Facebook group Stitch Mania and I was looking at the actual like um, definition or the, the, the event description, the description. Okay. And what Katie and Garrett had written, Katie, I guess had written, you know, the original Stitch Mania, I believe is 2015, start 15 projects over the first 15 days. But since then it's evolved and this is what's written. Do whatever will bring on the mania for you. And then there's a list. Start 15 projects, great. Start 19 projects, great. Work on 19 whips, sure. Um, make it, excuse me, make it a monogamania, why not? Like make it a finishing mania, sure. Like there's a list of a whole bunch of things. Do any combination of the above. And then it goes on to say, the point is to push yourself outside your comfort zone, whatever that may mean for you. This is your mania. Enjoy it. Now here's an interesting thought. Again, I'm back into the reflective and thoughtful, which is just part of me. So this part that I read to you, do whatever will bring on the mania for you. The point is to push yourself outside your comfort zone, whatever that may mean for you. This is your mania. Enjoy it. There's actually nothing in that description <laughs> that says anything about stitching and starting and finishing or anything, anything at all specifically related to stitching. Because as I look ahead for myself for these next few weeks, I'm feeling that I have a lot going on. <laughs> I am working on starting, uh, on getting ready to have new patterns released. Um, and that always puts me in a bit of a tizzy, um, especially as I'm working on finishing up stitching one model and I'm trying to bang out one more model before all the patterns are done, released. Um, I also have this major outside of my Stitching World project hanging over my head. Um, I have a college reunion coming up and I've volunteered for a pretty big project that happens before. Um, it, it's called a record book and I have literally hours of work ahead of me um, that needs to happen mostly next week. Um, I just, I started to put together this list of things that, that are really, I'm starting to rev up some of the work for my own floss tube retreat for August. Um, I realized that I have my own mania going on or what feels like mania, what feels like a lot going on. I mean, don't we all, but it, this month of May feels like a lot going on and it's not the mania that gets the typical description of start a project every day. So in a lot of ways, I'm calling myself doing my own version of media, just doing my best to stay focused in all the things that I have going on. For the sake of our conversation, our time together, I am working on new patterns. The reason I'm not showing you the stitching that I've been doing really for the last two weeks is that I'm very excited to share it with you, but I'd like to wait till it's done, um, as well as just trying to get all that together. Um, for those who haven't been a part of this before, I so enjoy giving away charts when I release new patterns. So if you would like the chance to get to win one of my um, patterns for as a giveaway, please leave a comment in this um, video, um, any comment you want, and just make sure your initials are there. Um, just you know, don't say giveaway, don't give free, don't say free pattern or anything like that, but just leave a comment. It could just say, thanks for the video. 
just make sure you include your initials. My initials are ABC. That's how I came to name my pattern design business works by ABC. Um, and by you leaving your initials, that tells me you're interested in your, in potentially winning a pattern. And that will just hold out until whatever video it is that I have new patterns to share. Um, so the last, the last thing to talk about briefly is bobbin lace. This is the piece that was on my pillow when I last showed you, and it was on the pillow when I went out to Arizona, and now it is finished. And I actually finished it when I was out there. That Sunday, most of the time I was sitting outside, I was working on this because I, I got to this realization that I felt like doing lace and I, the timing of it, I realized, I bet I could get this done. And I did. And I didn't take it off the pillow because I wanted to be able, under good light and good circumstances and have the right cutting tools for the threads and everything. Um, but it was done when I was out there. Um, just a little bookmark piece. It just And it was specifically not a complicated design. Um, and for those who are interested, I will put a link below to, did I, I have no memory whether or not I talked about this before. The pattern is a freebie from a website. So, I mean, I'm okay with holding this up and showing it to you. For those who are lace makers, it is a source. Um, actually, when I post it on Stitch Mania, um, so in a moment, I'm going to wrap this up, but then I'm going to attach the end of this about a 15 minute video of me doing bobbin lace out in Arizona. So if you want to stick around and watch that, you certainly are welcome to. Um, I posted, I was able to post that video on Stitch Mania and a number of people commented, oh, I've always been interested in bobbin lace. How do you get started? Blah, blah, blah. When I posted a finished picture of this, I had written out a whole little thing I put together about some thoughts about starting bobbin lace. I'm actually not sure how much space um, YouTube allows in the comment box below, but I think what I'm going to do is copy and paste at least most or whatever I can um, because, you know, I took the time to pull together some sources and some links and stuff, and I think it might be interesting and helpful for anyone who's interested in bobbin lace stuff. I'm going to repost what I put in Stitch Mania related to bobbin lace so you can check out those sites. I will also include a link to um, the site where I got this freebie pattern from. Um, so that was the bobbin lace pattern that, um, like I said, it's not a complex pattern. So I was able to work on it and talk at the same time, which would not always be the case. All right. I talked way more than I thought I was going to, but that's okay. Um, I hope you enjoyed my take on, um, everything related to stitch nanigans. Um, my experiences there and just the overall feel of what it means to be a part of a community for a few days, an in-person community. That's where I'm going with that. I love this. I love being able to share with you. Um, and I think it's also probably why it took me a few weeks to sit down and do this, that I just needed with a deep breath to acknowledge, you know what, I'm not in person with my people. <laughs> I need to just acknowledge that this is all on screen with my people. As always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the likes. Thank you so much for the comments. Um, if you're interested in being entered in my giveaway, um, comment below with your initials. And like I said, cross your fingers right after this is going to come um, the video that was filmed in Arizona of me doing the bobbin lace. Thank you so much. Till next time. Bye. You're doing bobbin lace and people say, oh my gosh, how do you keep track of what you're uh -huh. doing? Uh -huh. You're really only using four bobbins at a time, and you always talk in pairs, so I'm really only using two pairs. And when I do movement, it's only with two pairs at a time. What I just did there, I'm about to repeat here, and what I just did is uh, the basic movements involve the two center ones, uh -huh. that's called a cross. Okay. Then when you take the one. The right hand side of each pair okay. and you cross it in this direction, it's actually referred to as a twist. Okay. And then I take again the two center ones and go in this direction, I do a cross, and then I'm repeating this again, a twist. So that cross twist, cross twist movement is called a whole stitch. Okay. If I just did cross twist just that, it's a half stitch. If I just do cross twist cross, 
It's called a cloth stitch. Now, based on what I'm doing right here, I just have to see where I am. So I'm doing um, yeah. this little fan motif on the side, and I have to stick a pin in. Oh, this, there's a little these, thing there. These these okay. are this is called a pricking. What I'm working on, working literally on, you can touch it. This is just it's a piece of cardstock where I printed the pattern ahead of time. You cover it with um, uh -huh. uh, my chair, you can get the um, what do you call it? Clear, like you use on shelves. You know, that oh. you peel off the back. Yes. Contact paper. Mm, contact paper. Contact paper. Okay. Thank you. Contact paper. Come on. I know uh, <laughs> so you cover it with contact paper and then you pre prick the holes um, just with, like, in effect, a, a needle kind of that's held in a vise or kind of a vise like thing. So the holes are pre pricked, which allow you to guide your pins in easier than if it hadn't been pre pricked. Um, so what I just did there was three in a row hole stitches, <laughs> and right I'm putting there. a pin I'm in there. right in that hole there. To get to him, but it's happening. And now I'm just going to go Here back in this direction, cross twist, cross twist. I'm not going to do. Well, you know, I did this. I love the rhythm. Stitching. Yes, there's and the deer there's a rhythm to it. And I'll say no. in this little section that I'm in right now. You know, every, in this particular pattern, him, and I'll, I'll point out to you in a the second the different sections that I'm in. So I'm doing this that. extra yes. little maneuver around Even that pin. No that pin for this little area is called a pivot pin. Yeah. I just put the, the, the thread around, and now I'm putting it under this pair. And now I'm just going to maneuver back. Cross twist, cross twist. Or cross twist, cross, yeah just going back like this. So these little motifs on the sides here, on this pattern, going along the sides, are, refer are fans. Um, and there's different ways to do fans. The ones on this original pattern that are red, which I'm, I'm not doing it in the color. But yes, they're, they're in red thread there. Well, yeah, although the way um, oh, so that actually, oh, actually corresponds to a color? Actually, so two different color? things. The original I pattern. I, I probably shouldn't. No, 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 that's fine. Pattern. No, it's, it's, this is actually a freebie pattern off of a website. Okay. So this oh. is not a problem to We're show, good. actually. Okay. We are actually good. Um, whoever, the person who did this, this original thing, they chose to use red thread here. So that's how the red thread is showing up here. But that also said, so this is the, the pricking. This is what I photocopied and have, in effect, created with this the dots that are here is where I print holes okay this is what's called the working diagram and the colors that are here are more or less a universal color thing although sometimes they get a little off kilter what's showing up red here are the hole stitches cross twist cross twist right what's showing up in purple here is cloth stitch cross twist cross and what's showing up in this aqua green color is half stitch, cross twist. Oh, okay. um, and there's a few other things that are going on here. These areas right here are referred to as spiders, mm -hmm. and I'll get to one in a second. Um, the original pattern has them actually alternating between um, a cloth stitch spider and a half stitch spider, and I'm doing all my spiders the same. Um, actually, as I looked at this, I couldn't see, I think the person who did this did them all the same. These spiders all look the same to me. I don't mm -hmm. think they did what's showing in this working diagram, okay. which is fine. Someone might choose to vary from a pattern, just like in cross stitch, people will vary from a pattern. Um, so what happens, you know, the, the whole question of, how do you know which bobbins to use? How do you know? Especially if they all look identical. Yes. Well, I'm working, as I've been doing this whole pattern, um, there's different sections. And you, you work along in a section, it, like right now, I've, I'm just working on this little fan area. And in a minute, I will finish this little fan area. Mm -hmm. And I might have one or two little choices of what I can do next. But there is an element of, you go with, and this is in torsion lace, there's a little bit of differences between one style of lace and another. But there is an element of you go as far as you can, and then you reach a point where you yeah. just need a thread yeah, coming from another that. direction. Right. And in, or, or when I say a thread, it's really a pair of thread, right. a pair really of bobbins. Uh, um, yeah. And in order to get that pair, you actually can't take it because it needs to be used for another section. So you need to actually finish that previous section 
before you can do anything. And I'll show you what I'm talking right, about in a minute a, as soon as I finish this fan. Uh, so this fan is just, um, like this it's one pair, I don't know if you guys can tell, has basically been moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, in this section, in this scenario, this is referred to as a worker pair okay. because it's doing the work. These guys are referred to as passives because they're just passively sitting there. Um, it's not that every section you have workers and passives, but it's often the case that's like this, what you have this going on. Um, so back here. Take me. Back well, here. Like, this yeah. is. Yeah. So I missed what yeah. this is called. It's called bobbin lace. Bobbin lace. The way and the shorthand thing of what I say to people, it's it's in effect the way lace was made before machines made lace. Mm -hmm. um, there is also needle lace, and depending on what time era you're talking about, sometimes needle lace is very very fine and very beautiful and um, sometimes you could tell the difference between needle lace and bobbin lace if you know what to look for um, and it has to do with how many threads are going in there and, and um, being able to follow thread trails so this right there this last pinhole that I did that is the end of that fan now this pivot pin this particular thing that's going on net right now has a whole bunch of threads built up on it and what I'm actually going to do is remove that pin and kind of, this is like a tension thing that's going on. So I have to kind of wiggle it out so they all kind of lay nicely. So, um, and I'm even gonna try and fix that up a little bit. And there's a little element of it's not gonna look right until I start getting the next thing in. So the next thing to happen is I'm looking, what am I gonna do next? What I'm gonna do is I'm continuing this path that's going here. I had to stop where I was working on this path because I needed threads to be coming coming from this direction and I couldn't get them until I finished until I did this fan so that's what I mean by you want to say oh I'll do this whole path you can't do this whole path you need the threads coming from this direction so um, well it's like you need to no no it's good let me you know this is a way I can explain it to people it's like you need to do whatever you can do until you don't have the threads to do that anymore and then you stop and do whatever you need to do to get those threads. You use bobbin holders of, uh, different people have different versions of these. I like these little wood ones that almost look like popsicle sticks um, to kind of hold things in place. And now I'm gonna bring these guys over. Because I know, I know I'm gonna need this immediately. I mean, I could have left more than that. But, so this section right here, if you look at what I've already started to take off the pins, this is alternating between so this right up here is um, cloth stitch, and the next area was a half stitch. And the cloth stitch looks like, like linen. Actually, another like name linen. for it is yeah. linen stitch. The half stitch <clears throat> is a little bit more of an open thing, mm -hmm. and that's what I've got going on here. So this was the last place where I was, and I literally couldn't do anything else until I had another pair ready to come in. So here I am, ready to bring this pair in. Um, when you're at the edge and half stitch, you usually put on an extra twist. It, it just helps with the edges. And I'm putting this pin in there. And now, when I'm going back this way, you'll see I'm only doing cross twist, cross twist, cross twist, and yes, one more cross twist. What I, what I just did right there, I was looking. Here was the last pin, and I needed to make sure that I left a pair of bobbins, a thread pair, coming from that pin. So I'm not working this, this pair's done. It's staying off to the side. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna have its use later on. So here I am at the edge, I'm putting in an extra twist, putting in the pin for that, little extra tension, and now I'm working my way back across. Again, half stitch is just one cross, one twist. What I was doing with the fan on the side was the whole stitch, which is cross twist, cross twist. Um, so now I'm ready for another pair. And in this scenario, and I'm working on a small pillow. This is my travel pillow that'll fit in a suitcase. If I were ahead of my larger pillow, I might be doing this a little bit differently, but I'm leaving them here and just taking out one pair as I need them. So here I am bringing the other. Um, and this is a magnetic little 
magnetic pincushion, for lack of better words, which is just easier to use than a regular pincushion because I'm not even wasting the time or the physical act of putting it in. It's just like throw it out there and it'll stay. Um, and so at the same time, I'm tensioning to get that fan sort of happy in place. Cross twist. So now I'm working my way back here. This thread pair is done. Again, if I was on my regular pillow, I'd have a little bit more room. Trying to say, when I'm done, I try to move them aside a little bit. There's that extra twist that I use on half stitch. Put this pin in. Cross twist. All the way across. Take another pair. Twist. Now with half stitch, you don't have the clear cut one worker working back and forth because the bobbins are sort of switching places. It's um, with whole stitch and cloth stitch, it's more clear that it's one pair that's the worker and the other pairs that are the passives. It, there's much more movement around. And the way you can real, the way I learned it and understood it the best is one of the first projects I did in learning half stitch was different colors, like using pearl cotton, um, much thicker thread, pearl cotton with different colors. And you start off with a strip and cloth stitch and you see the one color is doing this. And then when you switch over to half stitch and all the colors change around. There's a pattern to it, but they change around. Mm -hmm. So I'm done here. I put a pin in here. How long would you say it took you to learn this? Um, well, you know, there's always new things to learn because you can always go and learn new, new different types, different, um, if there's so many different pieces or different stuff, you know, you learn cross stitch. You learn how to cross, you d you've got it. There might be some specialty stitches to learn or something like that. With bobbin lace, there's always something new to learn. Um, I have this thing here, that's the basics, right? What, yeah, I mean, the basics of cross, of, 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 um, there's, I mean, what they say is there's three basic stitches, half cloth and whole stitch. Okay. There's things like spiders to learn. There's things like rose ground and some other motif things to learn. You know, it depends, your you interest level. You, it, it's your interest level. It's how much do you want to do at any given time. All right, so here I am in a place that I can't put in that next pin because I need to actually be doing this center, this center area is where I'm going to be putting in that spider. And this pinhole needs the thread coming out from the spider. So I'm stuck. I can't do any more of this path until I get that spider in. Well, I can't get that spider in until I get the threads from this path. Well, I can't get the threads from this path in until I do the fan. Like that's how it, it builds itself up. So I'm going to bundle these guys. Actually, yeah, this is just kind of the number of bobby that I have. Yeah. I think that's adorable. I know. I have that. Thank you. I, you know. And yeah. then I'm glad you these guys oh, together. Like, oh, I'm in the seasonal spirit. I'm going to start this. And now it's April, and I'm like, oh, I should pull that back out. So it'll be right back. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe this Christmas even. Exactly. <laughs> it's adorable. I love that. And, and I actually used this here. guy. I took his and what, what individual self and enlightened like that pivot it for mm -hmm. us uh, uh, Secret Santa exchange there. at school. Okay. So, and yeah, okay. he's so adorable. I can't. I think I might make him again. You know, I love stuff. I want to. I really want to share with you. So this, okay. you know, yeah. I didn't come over to this side. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't 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 know. I didn't